Hi, I'm Steve Babitsky, president of Seek Incorporated. I'm here today with attorney James Mangraviti, and we're going to be talking about expert witness depositions. Jim, what are the most three most important things that expert witnesses need to remember about expert witness depositions? Okay, um, I would say uh, things that I teach my experts over and over again, the people that I'm training, the following three things. Number one, it's an interrogation, not a conversation. And we'll see an example of that in a second. Number two, it's an open book exam. It's not a memory test, okay, which can be very comforting to an expert. And number three, be very careful of absolute answers. Um, those are just three bits of advice that I would give somebody who's going to give a deposition as an expert witness. So can you give us an example of each of these points by doing some role playing with me? I'd love to. Uh, now this is an actual case that we, um, that we ran into and I'm just going to demonstrate it here for you. Uh, Mr. Babitsky, uh, can you please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing about the truth, so help you God? I do. And you know, the last time I said I do, it ended up costing about a half a million dollars in a divorce action. Uh, really? Um, uh, uh, what were the grounds for the divorce? I don't, do we really have to get into that? What were the grounds for the divorce? Cruel and abusive treatment. Um, was there infidelity as well? Uh, yes. Um, were there restraining orders issued against you? Just two. <laughs> so the point we're trying to make here is it's an interrogation, not a conversation. If you're having a conversation amongst friends, somebody says, I do, you can talk about your divorces, you can talk about whatever you want. When somebody asks you to swear if you're going to tell the truth, the whole truth, and or, or, um, so help you God at a deposition, you don't want to give out this, um, this extra information that you just went through a messy divorce. So that's the lesson that we're trying to teach. The next lesson that we're trying to teach is it's, it's not a memory test, it's an open book exam. Quick demonstration for you. Mr. Babitsky, when were you first retained um, as an expert witness in this case? April 14th, 2013. Thank you. Um, again, the lesson here is it's not a memory test. He didn't know the information off the top of his head. He has his well-organized file with him. He looks it up. So it's an open book exam. Okay, the third bit of advice that we'd like to give um, people is to, um, is to really beware of absolute answers. And for that, Steve is just chomping at the bit to do a demonstration with me as the witness. So we're going to switch roles here. I'm going to be the witness, and Steve is going to be the examiner. Mr. Magravidio, have you ever lied? No. How old are you now, sir? Uh, 45. So is it your testimony here today that in your 45 years of life, you've never told a lie? So you never told a lie to your wife? No. You never told a, never told a lie to your parents? No. And when you, occasionally you took your wife out to dinner? I take her out a lot. She likes to go out. And sometimes she puts on a nice, tight red dress? No. Blue dress? Uh, she doesn't wear dresses. Pants? Yes. Does she ever ask you, sir, does this outfit ever make me look fat? Does she ever ask you that question? Y yeah. Does she ever ask you that question? Yes. Okay. And did you ever in your life tell, tell her that the outfit she was wearing made her look fat? Just yes or no. Did you ever in your 45 years ever tell your wife that the outfit she had on made her look fat? Not that I can recall. Thank you very much, sir. So we just saw a demonstration of a 45-year-old man who t testified that he never told a lie. Obviously, this is ludicrous. Anybody listening to this would know that most people, almost all people in the entire world, have told little lies throughout their life. They may have told lies to their children, to their spouses, to their family, to their coworkers. So as soon as this gentleman says he's never told a lie in his entire life, any, everybody listening to that knows one thing, and one thing only. And what's that? He's a liar. All right, just to follow up on the points uh, Steve and I were making on that demonstration, Another key to, to being effective as an expert witness at deposition or at trial is active listening. And what you really need to pick up on that question, have you ever lied? The real word to key in on is the ever, which is that absolute, okay? And you don't want to sign off on something that's absolute generally because there's going to be exceptions. As Steve was saying, almost everybody has lied in their life. 
Jim, what resources does SEEK provide to expert witnesses to help them with the discovery depositions? Oh, thanks, Steve. Um, we do a lot. Um, number one, if you go to testifyingtraining.com, you click on the re free resources tab. There's a number of things that you can download, including we have a deposition preparation outline that people find very helpful. Number two, we have a number of books that we've published that we've written together. Um, the A to Z Guide to Expert Witnessing, a book on depositions, a book on being a dangerous expert, for example. Number three, we offer public training seminars um, in various parts of the country throughout the year. Click on the Seminars tab, you get information on that. And finally, um, we work one-on-one -on -one with expert witnesses to help prepare them for depositions and improve their deposition skills, um, and we're happy to help. Um, visit testifyingtraining.com or give us a call at 508-457-1111. Thanks.